good day. I have to say I'm not a fan of pina coladas, but I have quite enjoyed being caught out in the rain today. I didn't anticipate I would be caught because the rain said it would start at three and it started at two and it chucked it down. And actually I think it's largely finished now. So by the time I walk home, <laughs> I'll start drying off. I've not, I can see steam coming off me. I'm not, I'm not sure if you can. But I, I had to go to somebody's house, just put something through their letterbox and then wanting to go to the library. So I went to the library and picked up a few books and I thought that will give me time to then do a walk and then get to the plot, do a piece at the plot and then get home before it starts raining. But no, I was about 45 minutes out and the heavens opened and yeah, sure enough, I have got drenched. And as I came off the River Brent onto the Grand Union Canal, the um, basins are so full. I mean, you know, the main basin, particularly that we pass, is really, really full. And the water is just coming over in torrents um, over the oak of the gates. You know, it's quite, it's quite incredible. I think, well, I did see a Canal and River Trust barge, working barge further up and I think they're coming down the Hanwell flight of locks opening them so that the water can flow more um, clearly and more smoothly down to the River Thames so uh, because that's where all the water here ends up but yeah I'm yeah I didn't expect to get caught out in the rain and I did but you know there we are there we are at one point my hair was uh, blowing in my face because there was quite a breeze and I thought oh well, you know I should have a hat on and then the next moment <laughs> it was actually just dangling over my eyes because it had got so sodden as you can see you know um anyway there we are this is my first no second visit to the plot this week but I was coming down here just to do a quick bit for A Week at the Plot, this first segment of A Week at the Plot. I don't have to do any harvesting, I just wanted to see how things were doing. Um, sadly, I've had to remove a dead frog from our pond. I don't think it was any disease or anything because it didn't have a head. So yeah, you know, nature and all of that. But I came down here, things are, things are fine, they're wet, you know, they're wet, but they're absolutely fine. But I was down here on, when was it? Monday, because we had a fantastic visit from this young lady who is doing a master's in urban growing. And she's visiting, and she's actually based in Berlin and is visiting a number of London and I think UK community gardens, allotments, or, you know, pocket parks, that type of thing. And I have met various people over the years who've come to this site to talk about urban growing. And she is the first one that has really, really known her stuff. I mean, she's doing a master's, so, you know, there we are. But it was just so great. Usually we, we whiz, whiz around in about half an hour and uh, the, the person says, oh, I need to go because I've got another meeting. This um, young lady was here for an hour and a half and we had a really good chat about what community growing means to me. She also told me what a council member, not of Ealing, but of another London borough had said was her view of community um, growing which was that it has to be in raised beds and I sort of questioned that absolutely you know without any <laughs> shadow of a doubt you know no it doesn't have to be in raised beds it can be absolutely anywhere it can be in a whole you know load of, of sinks or baths it can be like here where there's allotments it can be uh, smaller allotment places like our sister community garden it can be open spaces you know community gardening and community growing is is it has a plethora of exciting and individual circumstances to the space in which it happens 
And I said to her, I think sometimes council members and, and uh, developers may say that community gardens and community gardening is more about raised beds because they are looking at that land being an asset to build on potentially in a few years time rather than an asset of growing to the community. I've heard it you know, a number of times throughout my time at Social Farms and Gardens and it was really interesting that that, that thought was given back to me in the conversation that, that she and I had the other day and I refuted it completely. You know, um, meanwhile spaces, yes, you know, where a, a space may be given over to community gardening for a year or two years or three years before the development of that place, that space um, for housing or something else actually happens. Those are called meanwhile spaces. So your community gardening in that space, meanwhile, the plans are happening to actually develop it once the growing finishes. But yeah, I, I think the, the portability of, of raised beds and, and then being able to be moved from space to space, I, I'm, I think that's, that's certainly short term community gardening, that's, that's not long term, but yeah. But we had a really, really good walk around here, really good chat. And then the following day she was going off to see one of the people that used to be one of my colleagues at Social Farms and Gardens and then the next day I think she was meeting with the director of Sorry Docks Farm, Sorry Dock City Farm that is uh, in East London and she's meeting up with various other people you know so yeah it was it was interesting it really was and um, and then I, I as I was down here I saw various other plot holders who were asking me certain questions uh, so I was able to answer those questions, which was good. One was quite an important question for the plot holder. Uh, so I was pleased to be able to be here because that plot holder's not here that much. So I was, be I was able to answer the question and put that person's mind at ease. So, yeah. And there's a magpie out there pecking on our, our neighbour's brassicas at the moment. They grew some fantastic cauliflower this year and... and the magpie is pecking on the brassica leaves from those cauliflowers so um because they've harvested their cauliflowers now but yeah and it looks as though it's going to dry up so so maybe i should have left my walk until a little bit later rather than getting out as soon as i'd had lunch but you know what i am absolutely drenched through i don't see you see how wet this is um, oh, and that's drenched as well. So I'm always two magpies now, two for joy. I did think I could see two because whenever I see a single magpie, of course, I, I say hello to it or salute it. Usually I say hello. One for sorrow, two for joy. So we've got two over there that are quite joyful pecking at brassica leaves. So yeah, I'm, I was going to talk about something else, but I'm absolutely drenched through. So I'm going to say goodbye for this segment of a week at the blot, 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 week at the plot. Um, and I will see you again very soon, I am sure. Hopefully quite a bit drier. See you soon. Bye.
good day. We're going to have even more rain again tomorrow morning so we've had to postpone a working party and at that working party we were going to be putting wood chip down on communal paths and the path between my neighbour and myself was getting a little bit muddy so I have done the job this afternoon. There's a little bit more up top that I can do but I don't want to use too much wood chip. There's still a huge pile of wood chip left. Um, I think I've used three barrows so far, two in this area and one uh, elsewhere. And even though these paths are between plots, they are actually communal paths. So any plot holder can walk up and down these plots, or the, not the plot, but the plot paths. Um, you need permission to actually walk on somebody else's plot unless you're uh, a, um, you're a committee member and you're, you're checking something. Um, we're not, you know, hugely strict on that because obviously a lot of people here are friends and, you know, just like me I'll, I'll sort of step over and talk to our neighbours so yeah it's not particularly rigid but it's it's just part of our constitution to make sure that people's plots remain their own plots but yeah um there we are that's that's a little bit of work i've done this afternoon and it really is a gloriously sunny day it really is as you can see um I'm going to get another barrow now and just put it somewhere else uh, on another communal path. So that's a little job done. Doubt I'll be down here tomorrow with all the rain, but I'll be back down here Sunday because we've moved the work party, as I said, to Sunday. And we'll continue moving the pile of wood chip onto communal paths. So, yeah, that's... Um, that's it for me for this segment of a week at the plot and you can see the sun is rather glorious so what I'm going to do now is take a half hour stroll up the canal see you very soon bye good day this is the soft fruit bed that I did some weeding on was it about a week ago I think and I was saying that the the black current was budding up you can see here um, or maybe if I do that can you see just there the black currents budding up and it needs a prune I mean I can see there there's some crossing crossing branches but I just want to prune that and open that up it's a bit difficult to see and these are three gooseberries I put in and you can see how they become intertwined which I knew they would I was sort of treating them as one but now they've got to this size I need to prune them so that they act as one so that we keep the center open and this thornless cultivated blackberry here which is also up here bending over there that needs to be tied into those wires those strings but it's a bit cold and I'm not going to do any of that today but I do want to do a little job so I'm coming over here and most of the canes in this bed are summer fruiting raspberries and the thing I like about summer fruiting raspberries is that you can just cut them right down to the ground at this time of year because the fruit comes on new stems that grow so that's exactly what I'm going to do and I think what that will do is it will encourage me to get on here and weed this bed on a slightly drier day so yeah, I'm just going to get on and cut these raspberry canes down to the ground. Best laid plans and all that. I went and got my secateurs and then I thought, Paul, what are you doing? What are you doing? I was doing myself a disservice and I was doing 
viewers a disservice as well because there were just too many weeds in this bed the 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 most important thing for this bed was actually to get on top of those weeds particularly the weeds around this end which are um cooch grass um which will just you know carry on taking over the bed so i got my hand fork out and as you can see i have weeded this bed and i am so glad i did i i really am you know it's taken me half an hour to do it it's not um it's not perfect i think if i was going to be staying here longer than this growing year i would be taking most of these raspberries out at the end we've got joster berries but these are here are raspberries i'd be taking those out and really giving this bed a, a deep weed because the cooch grass is partly coming in from the side but is is still sort of deep down some of it is coming up from you know a good foot or so below however i've given it a really good weed with my hand fork and i'm confident that as long as i keep on top of the weeding of this bed we won't have a situation where the weeds take over so yeah i didn't want to do you a disservice i didn't want to do myself a disservice so now <laughs> i've done the weeding i'm going to grab my secateurs and just snip down to the ground each of the stems of raspberries It was just sort of like like a eureka moment you know what i mean i said to you i'm going to cut these down and then as i went to cut them down i thought what about all the weeds for come on what about all the weeds get those out you know get them out so yeah so there we are i've i've done that it yeah we'd, it would have just been a disservice to to me and to to you you know watching this as well because the most important thing in that bed that that the cutting them down could have waited those weeds they will just grow you know so yeah um i'm pleased to have sorted that out and that's one of my ambitions not resolutions not a new year resolution one of my ambitions is to try and keep on top of the weeding in the beds this year yeah so yeah i'm pleased to have done that and i've cut them down as well we'll have a look at the joster berries another day but they're they're absolutely fine they're a cross between a black currant and a gooseberry and they really are quite a delicious fruit they really are yeah i mean you know i've seen other youtubers and other people talking about things gardeners talking oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and and actually we never ever see it happening and and then suddenly it's instantly done and you wonder how many people have you got to help you do that you know so on this on on our channel at this plot here i i try and be as honest and as clear as possible you know it, it's if i get something wrong i let you know uh if i get something really really right i'll let you know that as well and <laughs> when i was just looking and just about to do that first snip of one of those raspberries i thought no get that cooch grass out that's far more important so anyway the bed is looking far far better than it was before and you know what i feel far far better about that bed than i did before it's taken me half an hour maybe 40 minutes longer than i anticipated i did think i'd be able to go for a walk 
it's oh my clock stopped working i don't know it must be around sort of 4 15 now on saturday afternoon and i won't be able to go for my walk today i did get showered upon uh, i wasn't wearing this but i did get showered upon when i was doing that work but it was just a shower and i think there's more rain due um so yeah i don't think i'm going to go for a walk and the light is beginning to fade as well so I'm so glad for my own mental health to have got on top of that bed because if I had just done the cutting down of the raspberries I'd have looked at it and gone yeah job you know a job done that's good but weeding it and cutting it down job absolutely done very happy about that and also sorry who asked me somebody asked me about cardboard have I gone to our local um, shops and things like that we don't actually have that many um, shops around us that have cardboard available because cardboard has become a commodity and it can be sold to recyclers so with the cost of living crisis prices rising all of that a number of shops are actually doing that they're bundling up their cardboard and it is a resource for them to um, sell to get money back so yeah we, um, you know, we get it where we can. And there is a white goods shop up the road from us that is very, very good. But many white goods nowadays don't come in cardboard. You know, they come in that ubiquitous plastic covering that we all hate. But um, hey ho, there we are. Anyway, that's it for this week's A Week at the Plot. I'm going to leave it there. We've got a work party tomorrow morning, Sunday morning here. Hopefully it's going to be much drier than it was this morning. Though this morning wasn't as wet as everyone said it was going to be, or the forecast said it was going to be. So, yeah, I'll leave it there and I will see you very soon for another full week of A Week at the Plot on YouTube or another segment on Planet Vegetaria. And obviously, if you have any questions or you have any comments, please do leave them down below. Um, I've said last week, but I'll say here again, if you would like to follow my, my writing, the occasional articles I'm going to be doing, um, please go to medium.com forward slash at P-A-U-L-S-A-V-I-D-E-N-T. And you can... You can subscribe there. If you become a subscriber rather than just following me, that would be great. And um, I will see you again very soon. And I hope wherever you are, you are able to think about what you're going to be growing and gardening this year. Or, um, or actually, if it's not too wet, get out and actually do some. And of course, some of you in other parts of the world are deep in snow at the moment so I don't think you'll be doing much. Anyway, see you very soon. Bye.